either $100,000 or 30% of the building's value would trigger the requirement for accessible entry and exit. And in our case, that means a, an elevator going up to the third floor. That in itself um, would cost something on the order of $500,000. That's probably um, some, somewhere around 300000 for the elevator itself, uh, maybe a little less, probably, probably about 150000 for the construction, maybe less, probably around thirty to $40,000 for the engineering and design, maybe less. Uh, but that's what we figure conservatively is the cost of an elevator. And in addition to that, there is new information that we did not have before as well. And that is that the walls of the second floor that were put in, uh, including the walls of the interior corridor that runs the length of the building, are not suitable for bearing weight. And they have to be deconstructed and additional studs put in in order for them to bear the weight of the floor above it that would actually hold either storage or offices. We have also learned uh, that according to Department of Environmental Protection regulations, uh, wallboard joint compound is a, explicitly mentioned as something that can trigger the asbestos containing material regulation and the figure for it being considered asbestos containing material is 1%. Ours has been tested at 2%. So the entirety of the second floor wall would have to be disposed of as asbestos containing material. So that's, that's a, a new item. And that makes up another 150 to 170 in new construction that we hadn't planned on. The totality of new construction compared with the estimate that we were using before it is an extra $190,000. So that's, um, you know, uh, two thirds again, the $300,000 figure we've been, we've been working with. So those two together, the uh, conservative estimate of 500,000 for the elevator, elevator and a conservative estimate of 200,000 for the new construction, um, more than double the cost of the proposed project. Again, it's our understanding that it was an error on the, in the early part of the process that the elevator was not included. So that should have been included in the original uh, request for borrow as part of the project. And then we'd only be faced with the extra $200,000 of construction we hadn't anticipated. Uh, this should have been anticipated um, several years ago when the first plans were, uh, were developed. And again, we don't know exactly why it wasn't, but in some senses that's water under the bridge because we now know that it is required. So that's how we got to where we are and pretty much where we are. So I understand that there is not a lot of appetite for increased borrowing. Um, and one of the options that we have is to take from um, either and uh, capital stabilization, general stabilization. Uh, and usually general stabilization is used for unforeseen uh, events, capital stabilization for capital projects. Pretty clear the elevator's a capital project. It's pretty clear the new expense is uh, unanticipated. Um, but given the situation, if we spread the new cost between those two um, funds relatively equally, um, I think that would that would uh, not overly deplete the capital stabilization fund, which stands roughly at. $876,000 now. Uh, 
He does it at 900. Oh, sorry. I see where you're going. Okay. And then uh, general stabilization is 967,000. This is after we added to those at town meeting and then spent from capital stabilization at town meeting. So those are the latest figures that I have for those two funds. So the, the additional amount we're talking going over is $700,000. Um, so three hundred and fifty from each of those funds would cover it. Um, a little more and we wouldn't have to uh, and we would be protected somewhat against, uh, as uh, the chairman put it before, going back to the well too many times. So that's where we stand and uh, my recommendation for a way to move forward if that is the desire of the board. Have anything to add at all? We have a good summary. Uh, if, if, if you have a copy of the, of the code there and you can just sort of show it to the to the board, that would be helpful. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you. Uh, so it's towards the end here, but where I've got underlined, and this was an underlined because it was found in the class. So this pertains to everything basically what we're looking at. Another thing that that section of the code yeah, mentions underlined really pertains to uh, similar construction codes. I'll just go ahead and do my best and, and just read it for the record and for people listening at home or on Zoom. So this is the uh, Architectural Access Board Regulation 521 CMR uh, 3.3.1. If the work being performed amounts to less than 30% of the full and fair cash value of the building and if the work costs less than $100,000 and only the work being performed is required to comply, uh, 331B, if the work costs $100,000 or more, then the work being performed is required to comply with 521 CMR. In addition, an accessible public entrance and accessible toilet room, telephone, drinking fountain, toilets, telephones, and drinking fountains are provided, shall also be provided in compliance with 521 CMR. There is a couple of exceptions here. Um, it doesn't seem like they apply. Whether performed alone or in com combination with each other, the following types of alterations are not subject to 521. CMR 331, unless the cost of the work exceeds $500,000, or unless the work is being performed on the entrance or toilet. Um, curb cuts, alteration work, which is limited solely to electrical, mechanical, or plumbing systems, to abatement of hazardous materials or retrofit of automatic sprinklers, and does not involve the alteration of any elements or spaces required to be accessible under 521. But, we're, we're changing spaces and things of that nature, so we don't have an exception, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, uh, so, so I'll pause just, there. Just one further point is that that, that figure of $100,000 or 30% of the value of the building is applied to construction done over the period of, three, of 36 months. Of 36 months. Yeah, yeah. if you read further in there, it, it reads, you know, it's a combined total of over 36 months. Uh, we do have our chairman of the finance committee. If I'd like to recognize, would you like to make a comment? Yeah, I'm, I'm curious, A, as to uh, where we are arriving at our numbers, and, and B, I hear in this code there are some exceptions. Initially conceived, and I believe that might be why it was left out, when this project was initially it was to remove asbestos. We had little to do with what was above what using it for other space. That an initial concept. And it turns out that the, and, and as I recall reading the plan, they needed to be able to walk up in that area. And in doing so, when you start to look at the numbers and the calculations and such that it takes to walk in that area, it equals 
or might even be stronger than the, the ability to put a second floor. The suggestion was made, just simply leave the scaffolding there and maybe in the future it would be used. It was never, as, as I recall, intended to be used as space now. So that's where the alteration questions kind of come in. And I believe that's where the exception is. If we keep the project focused on asbestos, at that point, the exception is not there. From what I hear, that's and am I am I of the same? My concern with this is um, hearing the numbers now. We're contemplating taking roughly three hundred fifty thousand dollars from capital stabilization and three hundred fifty thousand dollars from uh, general stabilization to avoid borrowing. And, it, and, and keeping in mind that both of those accounts are, are rainy day funds. Well, I would have to agree when it comes down to that. But the level of urgency that seems to be occurring over this elevator that we're talking about, um, I, I just, I, 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 it just seems to me to be a bit of an overreach when the, the target here is to make this building safe for the occupants of the building, which, with which are beloved employees, and the public who comes in and out of the building with relationship to asbestos. That's, that's the, is, is that the main objective of what this renovation was meant for in the first place? When we first went through this? Chair? Uh, sure. I, I believe you are correct. Yeah, that's the 270, I believe, which was previously, which was the first estimate that was approved, and then we went and asked for additional authorization, 500, because that kind of that scope changed, and now we're tripping into this other requirement. Right. Yeah. So I, that, that's where I, the the initial uh, the initial amount I could support wholeheartedly, without a doubt, because of our our. It, I, I do recall in the plans, there was, in the initial plans, there had been left an opening within that set of plans that spoke of an elevator. I do recall that in the initial plans that I had seen, mm -hmm. they had that, we'll call it for better things, for a better way to call it, would be uh, penciled in. It was, uh, as I recall it, said potential or something of that nature elevator. So at some point, the concept of an elevator going being in that main hall as you went on the left, uh, that started somewhere. But just judging by what I'm hearing. It seems like there's been scope creep over the years. Exactly. And that's kind of a trip this elevator issue, which tripped this. And I'm just reading this code book, and thank you for bringing this, because this, this facilitates a few more questions after we have met this morning. I just want to, again, I just want to really publicly thank Pat for his great work and Tom for his great work and the collaboration in trying to figure out where we are here. But again, I'll just read for the record again, and Pat, tell me if I need to read more into this. Again, this is, you know, Architectural Access Board 521 CMR 331 uh, section. It, it's, it has another B here, so, but it's the exception rule. Um, if we go by the scope of just the asbestos removal, uh, alteration work which is limited solely to electrical, mechanical, or plumbing systems to abatement of hazardous materials or retrofit of automatic sprinkles, sprinklers and does not involve the alteration of any elements or spaces required to be accessible under 521 CMR is an exception. So I think what you're suggesting is if, if a scope of work was just for the asbestos removal itself, no other architectural changes in that space, it may qualify for that exception, which is that we're reducing the scope back to original, and we're not going to be able to move these office spaces around as, as may be needed, which would be a separate discussion. Yeah. Well, to be completely honest with you, that would have to be a separate discussion. Because yeah. asbestos is a whole other elephant in the room in the, in the real world. Now, 
I understand that we're at 80% on the asbestos abatement for design. For design? Right. For design, right? We're not at the baby stage yet. Yeah, I sent them off an email today to see where it's at, and I haven't got a response yet. But we're only at the design stage and not abating anything yet, right? That's right, they're in the design stage of uh, redoing the prints from previous with the structural design. Okay. That, that was where I was going with that. Uh, the, the, call, the, the, the next question that kind of begs asking is, when it comes down to the engineering and the repair work, is are we relying, going to be relying on the asbestos abatement company to do all of the construction work as well as the asbestos abatement? No. That's, and that, that's, yeah. you know, that's just a question that screams yeah. asking from a financial viewpoint. And, and Pat can, can speak to that okay. the request for proposals process. So, that being the case, if, if we have a, a construction company that's going to be in there doing this type of renovation, in that case, we may get be more cost effective. But if we're asking the specialist abatement company to do that, it will not be as cost effective. That, that's kind of the main concern here of mine. I, I can't voice, I, I am the chair of the finance committee, but that these are the the questions are going to be raised that tomorrow night we are having a finance meeting here yep. tomorrow night, and that those are the questions that will be raised um, at, at the finance meeting. If I, if I can pause for a moment and just based on this conversation, the board has questions at all. I don't know. If I, I don't know if I necessarily have a question, but a comment. And I just think this: we went from asbestos to bats to replacing walls to an elevator, and I think at this point. We need to be good stewards with the taxpayers' money. And I don't know if this is the time to be going above and beyond. I think what we need to do is do what we have to do to make the employees safe and move on from there. I think it's a great project. I think there's a lot of these things that need to be done. I agree we need an elevator, but it's just the time right now with this economy and what we're facing to be putting in an elevator and doing everything that's above and beyond what we have to do right now. Or do we save this money for a rainy day when we don't know what's coming up the bottom. I agree with Mark. Uh, my only other question is, is there any ARPA money we could use in any way, shape, or form on this? Well, not all the ARPA money has been expended. Um, it is conceivable. Uh, and, and I'm actually going to do a workshop tomorrow to learn more about federal procurement costs, so I'll know. But, yes, there any grants more available more. for elevators? Uh, so what's involved with that? And I, I just want to maybe um, define one aspect of the conversation, and that is it's not so much that we were going to do asbestos and then we wanted to add an elevator. It's that we were doing asbestos partly in order to be able to put a floor down on the third floor um, that would serve two functions. And one of them is, right now, there's no space between, um, maybe you can get, did you have those uh, photos? Yes, but no, I can put it up on this screen, I think. Um, we, we did bring some photos just to show you what it's like up there. And, if you're familiar with the second floor, you know there's a drop ceiling with ceiling tiles. Above that is um, sort of thin metal, um, not, not useful for anything but supporting a drop ceiling, um, a, a kind of a grid. And the lights and, and ductwork that, that's above the, the thing some insulation down on top of the ceiling tiles, and then nothing um, the rest of the way up to the third floor um, to where there's this plaster. Um, and in one corner, at least, it's started cracking and falling down. So it is true that the immediate problem is getting rid of that asbestos, which might crumble, crack at any time. We know that it has started to, so yeah, those are um, 
Those are some pictures of what it's like up there. That's some of the crap. I guess I, I have one other question or comment. I wish you had thought about this when Paul Mark had reached out to us a month ago. Well, um, money is in the capital bond bill for town hall renovation, but it is very difficult to get that money released. It's one thing to get it in a bond bill, it's another to get it released. There's been an extra $100 million in the Chapter 9 bond, transportation bond bill for, I would say, 10 years that has not been released. Um, so that that's, a, that's a different political question after it gets in the bond bill and gets passed. I believe it will get passed. There's a million dollars for town hall in there, but it may never become available. So that, it, and, and that is a political question I'm very actively following and hope to be able to help advocate for as time goes on. That would be, you know, that would solve a lot of problems right there. So in that sense, um, it could happen and we might want to wait and see what, what happens with that. So, yeah, that, I, that, 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 in that, progress. that, that is, that is, that is, that is, Changing out the entire ceiling. 
but now because of the bats and what they're saying about the asbestos now, the entire ceiling needs to be removed because it is uh, completely contaminated, uh, the upper half of it where it's inside the uh, opera house area. So the entire ceiling needs to be completely removed and redone. So everything kind of triggered one thing after another once we started getting back into it that wasn't in the original scope when we first started it. And when we first started, it was more of a preliminary thing to see where it was gonna go. And then for some reason it stopped and then the pandemic hit. So it never progressed any further. I was, like I said, I was just there for uh, what we could come up with design-wise. We were not at that time removing all the asbestos, uh, but since uh, the scope first started, more asbestos has fallen uh, off the ceiling. Uh, and that is probably due to all the bats that were in there that are no longer there. So, uh, so the damage has already been done, it's irreversible. So like you said, where do we go from here? How do we keep it to that? It's hard to keep it to the original scope that we started with a few years back because now more things have been noticed that have been contaminated, so they all have to be removed. And then when they did the engineering a few years ago, they never looked at the interior walls. So when we originally got the, when we got the set of prints uh, a little over a month ago, uh, that was a question that arose is, what's in the walls and can they handle the structural load? Um, so it wasn't so much even looking at, and they knew a few years back that we possibly would just be using FMA storage. We weren't looking at offices. That was something, like you mentioned, um, down the road we could look at something like that. So we weren't looking at adding offices, just possibly storage. So the only thing that changed design-wise is it went from 5 8 plywood to 3 quarter inch plywood for flooring up there to cover up the insulation. Because we still need to air seal the entire ceiling off from the roof. And, and that's uh, part of what's written in uh, some of the code books. Everything needs to be sealed very tightly. One is if we ever get bats back in there for some reason, they can't get down through and contaminate again. Uh, it's sealed off. The other thing is if we had left the plaster, it falls, it doesn't get through and contaminate anything else. So everything that's written up in this new prints with the sheetrock, the insulation, the plywood, that was originally in the other ones too, but we never looked, like I said, at the structural integrity of the walls below. Uh, is, is, the wall, is the wall structural integrity assuming we're gonna put offices and storage up there, or is it just at the base level of even sealing things off and putting down uh, a sealed floor, if you will. All I have is a word of mouth from the engineer saying it, it wouldn't handle that way. I don't have that in okay. writing. That's what I said. So there's more exploration on that. Yeah. yeah, I'll have to get that in writing to say that if we just do this, will the walls be OK? okay. We'll um, pause you there for a minute, Pat. Ms. Cole, do you have any questions at all? Yeah, yeah. several. <laughs> I don't think we get time enough for that. That we, that, that, that's why we call it a special yeah, meeting. Yeah. So we want to make sure we get through this. And, and can I just compliance. digress for a second and talk about elevators? I forget how many years ago. Time flies. Anyway, at least 15 years ago, nobody was, none of, nobody was around there, none of them. Uh, the town recognized that uh, we had to make the building handicap accessible. This is the select board and finance committee. And uh, we explored putting in an elevator. The same exact proposal as being proposed now was down to the basement or first floor, main floor. And uh, it was costed out at that time, 600000 by the Horse Brothers who own Bay State Elevator. They did it as a service to town. So if you put it out in the bin, this is the minimum it's going to cost you, $600,000. I don't think that that price has gone down in 15 years. So I would really question this proposal that's now a five-something. I'm guessing it's probably closer to a million. I think that's a very inaccurate figure. And by comparison, we might look at uh, Steve uh, Sears' stationary factory. Almost identical circumstance. He just put in an elevator that goes from the first floor or basement, main floor and third floor to make the building more handicapped accessible and more accessible for future economic expansion. And uh, I know 
you know, was a hell of a lot more than 600,000. So, we should really look at stats at that figure first. But I also recognize that it's tough to put the genie back in the bottle now. All these problems are out there, and we can't ignore them. The bats, the asbestos, that's our primary goal. But uh, the uh, structure and integrity of the building, the plumbing, evidently there's electrical uh, deficiencies throughout the building. Uh, some, yes. Yeah, okay. So, in other parts of the building. Don't forget that we're only concentrating. This only has to do with a uh, small portion of the total building. And these problems could extend to other areas of the building, uh, such as wiring, plumbing, structural integrity of the bearing walls. Well, I can care with Bobby, Mark, that is, is that any possible? Why don't we just do the asbestos part? It also would be what you just elaborated on too for the 500,000 we got. And I think what we ought to do is get a big nail, a couple of big nails to fly them and nail the upstairs uh, shut for the public and employees. We would have to find another uh, venue for the existing offices that are up there. They're very limited. I think the health agents up there, uh, the town planner, and uh, the building inspector. Historic committee too. Historic yeah, well, uh, they don't hold their meetings up there and they have all their stuff in storage. And I'm assuming that's where it probably is going to stay at, at the congregational church. They don't want to bring it up there because they can't get up them stairs to work on it. Correct. So, and I can say that in public, but it is an actual fact. Yeah. So, I think we may better just sit down and put our heads together and come up with a, a reasonable cost estimate to just do the asbestos and, of course, you have to do the, uh, everything you just referred to, Pat, and uh, close out that part of the building to both the public and the employees, and uh, perhaps uh, some space would be available at a reasonable price at the uh, CRA building. I don't know if you ever got in contact with anybody who actually wants it. Uh, still waiting for an email back. Yeah, Milltown, something or other, they yeah. own Milltown Capital. So, Bill. John, uh, John, that's actually a very good point. There is office space available at First Navigation Church as well. Yeah, so right in the I bet we can get it real reasonable compared to spending. I'm guessing we you can't even project how much we can spend more. Because there's always going to be complications. I mean, construction costs are going up all the time, materials are up. I mean, these prices that we Pat has now are probably outdated already because of the cost of materials and labor. Two, point, yeah, you can. two, two items I just want to just read into the record just for awareness. Um, I'm hearing kind of the same theme across the board here, and I want to give Mr. Esco a, a chance to. In section 332, it says if the work performed, including the exempted work, amounts to 30% or more of the full and fair cash value of the building, the entire building is required to comply with 521 CMR. So that's a 30% value of, what is it, $2 million? So that's yeah. a $600,000 threshold. And then 3.5, um, when the work performed on a building is divided to separate phases or projects or is under separate building improvements, the total cost of such work in any 36 month period shall be added together then apply to 521. So at that 30% over a period of 36 months, including the exempted work. Does that make sense? So three years, we're at a $600,000 threshold under exemptions. Okay. If I can digress, you probably say, whatever happened to the elevator that you guys approved for $600,000? It had to go up for a vote, a referendum vote, and it got defeated by the public. I'm yeah, remember that, 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 so that, 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 we were we were stunned that they would vote that down because let's be frank here, we're no, there's no sense to keep it secret. That upstairs thing is just looking for a lawsuit under the ADE rule, ADA rules. Sorry, 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 Sorry. Yeah, uh, just to go back to one of the things that Pat said was that um, taking down the asbestos and cleaning up all the asbestos contaminated insulation 
does mean that we would have to reinstall some insulation yep. and all of that. So one of the things we would have to figure out is how much it would cost to install that insulation. Now, Pat was suggesting that it might, it might be that what we installed according to the code for the new insulation would be too heavy for the existing walls. Um, we'll, have to, we'll have to find that out. If it's not, then we can install it for under $100,000. 100, then we're good. Then we can take you know a step back and say, um, yeah. you know, okay, now let's get a let's get a good plan that includes everything we want and have some options to do this, that, or the other. Figure out how much each yeah. costs and, and bring those options to the to the voters. Um, and the only thing that I'm concerned about now is what if just fixing the asbestos requires alterations that cost more than $100,000. Then we'll have to go yeah. ahead, you know. Yeah, we'll get that whole plan together. Yeah. Yeah. Don, what you're advocating now is the <coughs> asbestos under the current uh, mandate and the insulation. Close yes. off the office spaces up there? Um, well, I'm, I'm saying that it would be great if we could do that and while fixing the current situation up there, have any alterations not exceed $100,000. That would give us a breather and, you know, would enable us to figure out what the vision for the town hall is and whether we want to seal it off and buy the bank building for $500,000 instead or rent out houses in the congregational church or uh, rooms or uh, CRA, that, that, that sort of thing. Yeah, I think that's an excellent idea, just to take a step back and just do the asbestos, which is basically required, and do the insulation and the, whatever. Does yeah, that room have a name? I call it the attic. The attic, yeah. Well, everybody just, you're talking more of the insulation. Yeah. yeah. Everybody just always called it the opera house. Yeah, opera house. Yeah, 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 right. Just house. do that. A lot of history in that building, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, Just do those two parts and then step back and see where we are. Well, the question is, is that possible? And, and that's what we're going to have to get the answer from, um, one way or the other. We're going to have to get um, an option from Barry, which is just that, and figuring out a way to do it so that it meets code um, and see whether we can do that under $100,000. And, and not true. The other thing is, that's $100,000 over three years, so that means we can't do anything else to the town hall nope. that would go above the, the $100,000 in the next three years. No, it's 30% of the value of the building over three years. Pat, is there so any way to... Uh, we got, we got that no, I'm talking about the alterations. No, the, the total... The but total, the stuff that's not exempted. No. Stuff, it's, it's exemption and not exempted. Right. It's total 30%. Thank you. But, oh, I mean, yes, 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 yes. You get $100,000 trip on non exempt if you do that at any point. Right. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So yeah. we could, yeah. uh, for instance, yes. the uh, Green Committee is looking at maybe heat pumps instead of the boiler we have now. Um, that would be included in the, in the amount that we, we would have to make sure we didn't go over $100,000 in three years. Or we couldn't do that. The heat pumps sound like an exemption on the plumbing. That, that could be an exemption, but the other thing that we're looking at is to get grant money for the heat pumps, we need to have an answer, yes or no, whether we can insulate. And so we are looking into right now whether we can insulate the library roof, what's called a hot roof. Yeah. If that can be done, then we're we're going to exceed that hundred thousand dollars in a thirty-six month period. I'm not certified in building construction rules or, or these regulations at all, but I'm just kind of taking what I what I read briefly and kind of read through the, what I'm reading. Is I believe that the regulations are set to say, hey, take care of safety issues like asbestos removal right. or electrical and plumbing, and we're not going to hold you to these other standards. But once you stop making true improvements in architectural design or rooms and things like that, then you're going to trip it. So if we stay away from that and just go back to the original scope and really stay focused in that, I 
I feel like we might have a good argument for even a variance, even if we even if we trip it just by putting that wood down and sealing that room off because it's a safety issue. And it's then when I redesign office space or anything else of that nature. That's kind of my my reading. Right? Yeah. Pat, is, are you going on with Joe? Is there any way that we could lighten the load in that so-called opera room room? So um, and reduce and the stress on the the studs that are down in the. Uh, Central no, office there. No, because what happens is, um, and, and I know you're looking at doing pieces, but the electrical work itself that has to be uh, repaired up there uh, because some of it goes through the framing, some goes over, some goes under. Um, all that wiring would have to be fixed. So that's going to be a pretty good cost to get that done. But electrical is Electrical is exception. Okay. But then it, we still have exception. to run framing going across. All that framing in there, um, you can't use. It's all over the place. Yeah, so but we're not changing. Home. We're not changing the space. No, so we're just running framing across the whole thing, adding insulation, and like you said, I, I need to get this in writing from the architects yeah. whether or not if we just do the the basic minimum, which is just replace the ceiling tiles, replace the insulation, and have it air sealed without touching anything else, is that weight going to be okay? On those studs, it gets, there. Yeah, it gets more discovery. Yeah, because those yeah. studs are not structural studs; they're just regular studs. There's no structure. I want to pause. Mr. Esco's been listening. I don't know if he's raised his hand at all, but I wanted to make sure I don't miss him. Dan, any questions at all? Yeah, uh, I have a couple comments. I was uh, listening to what Mark was saying. I did not hear what Bob said. Uh, I did hear what Mr. Boyle said. Um, tend to agree. I, I think we need to tap the brakes on this. This is, uh, we're opening up a can of worms here that obviously nobody can actually tell us what it's going to cost. That's my sense. No one really knows what this will ultimately cost if we proceed. Um, no one really knows if we need an elevator or not. I don't hear many answers. Um, and I don't think we should make decisions if we can't get a complete picture of what we're actually facing. Um, I say to the absolute minimum to abate or encapsulate the asbestos. Uh, hopefully we don't trigger the need for an elevator and we look into that and get a definitive answer whether we will or won't. Um, it seems like Town Hall is going to be uh, much more costly down the line, longer term, uh, to, keep, to keep open. <laughs> so we may need to figure out a plan B. Um, either a vision for Town Hall renovation, a complete renovation, or um, a new location. And, you know, I'm not saying today, but I'm just saying 10 years down the line, we want to keep sinking money into the building. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm not in full support of just continued spending without an end in sight. That's what I can tell you. I'd rather protect the taxpayer's money and come up with a more sound plan. Um, that's my two cents. Great. Thanks, Mr. Esco. Sure. I just also want to say, and I, I, and I hope everybody is mine that I speak with, we understand that we need an elevator in the future in that building. We're sympathetic to the people that have difficulties getting into that building. We know if we need an elevator or some, some other plan in the future, as Mr. Osco said. But I just don't think at this time, and I agree with Mr. Royal because I was told previously that the elevator was going to be over a million dollars when I talked to the previous town manager. So we do understand and we are sympathetic to that, but I just think at this time, we just need to, concerning the economy and what we're going to be going to, I think we need to just do what we have to do right now to get by. Thank you, Mr. Crow. Just to add that there, Mark, if we could do away with this third floor permanently, then there's no need for an elevator to go up there. So now we're reduced to an elevator just serving two floors, and we might be able to eliminate the first floor, I keep saying the basement, the first floor, by putting in a handicap ramp. Now the reason they didn't consider a handicap ramp the first time, because of the grade level, it would have went out all the way into Carson Avenue. Yes. But if you do one that zigzags, right. you eliminate some of the grade, and that might be the way to go with handicap accessible. We'd have some of the landing, maybe land where the current door is. I, I don't know, but somebody can figure that out. I think that's the way to go. Because this, 
Okay, I'm done. I, I think, Mr. Uh, and just to echo Mr. Esco's comments, I, I like the idea of going back and do a vision, like a vision and session, a vision and process of what the town hall should look like and things like that. I think there's a need for off, new office spaces and meter rooms for sure. I think there's value in that, but that's not what the ask was of the town residents when we made the authorization. We're really talking about the asbestos removal, and, and so if we minimize the scope to that and then take a second you know take another pass at what the what the town hall should look like in the future and what that looks like and there may be more state and federal money down the road uh who knows um but i i think that's why i'm hearing the board's um direction on this is that um minimizing the scope we'll go through the engineering plans and focus in on that floor and see what we need to do to close that all up did a motion joke um yeah, I'll, I'll entertain a motion. No, I said, was that a motion? Uh, I'll, said, I'll change it into a motion. Okay. Yeah. I'll second it. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll, I'll move that we uh, we minimize the scope of the town hall renovation to the asbestos removal uh, required and the closure of the third floor uh, until until future notice and um, engage in a vision session down the road for what the future of town hall may look like. I can't take a, Oh, I can't make a motion as chair? That's right, I can't. You can. You can. can. Of course you can. I can't? Yeah, I can. Sure can. Okay. That's not that. Okay. Okay. Sorry. That's okay. That was going to say you four and four. It's okay. Okay, so that's a motion. Yeah. Does that make I second it. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Mr. Ford. Motion is second in discussion? You, you said uh, the yes, best is removal, but did that include? The work that's required in the floor area of yeah. the yes. so whatever we need to do to close off the third floor. Okay. Yeah. I, and, and you said, and that includes the planner and board of health historical commission rooms. Yeah, you close off the third floor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's so many other options out there. I mean, there's space at Congress and church and space at no time. I mean, yeah. the bank's an option. To yeah, it'll be, it'll be bank. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it'll, it'll be temporary until we figure out that strategy and that vision. So we we'll have to ask our team members and employees to work with us as we go through this because we can't. Hold on for one second. Before you uh, vote, just one thing. Uh, it sounds to me like you're, you're looking for vision. Uh, maybe we should undertake a, a feasibility study in the building for upgrades and updates in the building. Asbestos, when this thing started, the object to it was, it initially was only supposed to take up like five feet, initially, was it that? Yeah, so the first was supposed to take out five feet. Just so we could do the framing. Right. And that but was it. In, in the elephant in the room is the asbestos. Yep. Once the asbestos is removed, identified and removed, any other renovations that take place, no matter how far in the future, you don't have to think about the asbestos any longer. The right. asbestos is gone. Right. And that was the vision from the start. When, right. when we, we had had this discussion about this, and I, and, and, and it, I would concur with the, with the, the select board, the honorable select board, that they, that, that just pump the brakes and, and let's focus on the asbestos because right now, that's the thing that really needs to be taken care of. Yep, I agree. And, and, and that's, I think out of that vision session will come a feasibility study because we'll need engineering work and what does that look like and things of that nature too. Right? Yep. You, and from a feasibility study, you, you would be able to you would be able to cherry pick things that are needed and, and, and go from there. If you if for whatever whatever reason we had ARPA show up, there's an opportunity. Yep. Let's take advantage of it. Uh, grants, ADA grants. The ADA grants every now and again fall out of the sky. Yep. And and if an ADA grant would fall out of the sky for us, there we go, an elevator. We may have to put some capital stabilization with it, mind you, and I would advocate for that instead of borrowing money to do that, but we may have to do that. Uh, you know, I, and I, I just ran a couple of really quick and dirty numbers. The, we would be left, if, if we follow the $350,000 thought process to put the elevator in, we're going to be left with a little over a million dollars in those accounts. In, in each. Between, between the two of them, and, and that's not an accurate number. But that would lead, so that would not deplete the accounts dramatically, but to John's point, uh, an elevator, in my opinion, 
An elevator is at least $150,000 per floor, and just for the elevator itself, not the construction cost. So back when I was 10 years ago, when I was fiddling around with that stuff, it was 100 grand. So as we all know, construction costs are increased to that. I'm guessing it's, as Mark said, it's, it would be easily over a million dollars. Total. Easily. And that check goes up every day, as we know. So and so, all right, and that's... Thank, thank you. Yeah, there's a motion, second, and continuing discussion. Uh, any Mr. further? Chairman. Uh, Mr. Esco. Does that mean that we're still going to ask uh, voters to approve additional borrowing at the special town meeting, or what's the deal? No, we will table that. Um, well, great question. I'll propose that we table that uh, for future town meeting to be determined, but no later than our, our standard town meeting next year. Okay, so if this motion passes, we'd be canceling the special town meeting? No, we have two other articles, two other warrants that need to be discussed. Okay. Yeah. All right, thank you. They were the actual drivers of the special town yeah. meeting. Yeah, they were, they were primary, yeah. Uh, any other discussion? Okay, hearing none, um, roll call? No, we can do, we can do a voice vote because we have the oh. roll call because we have one on Zoom. Let's do roll call. Yes. 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 Excellent. Thank you for that conversation, everybody, and having a special meeting. A couple more things on the agenda, but again, Pat, I want to thank you for your great work, your leadership. We've been through this. It hasn't been easy. It's been a lot of history to it. And again, Mr. Hutchinson, I know you. You know, you come in after your first year into this, so thank you for your collaboration. Understand as we step through this as well, and. Um, and we have some great steps moving forward to connect with, with our architect and, uh, and do more of that discovery and then we reset. And, um, and I, I love the idea of Mr. Esco have a vision session about what we should do with Town Hall over long term. So uh, I think that's excellent. Thank you for the for that conversation. Um, going on to the next item. And Mr. Boyle. Pat, your experience in construction has been invaluable to this time. And this project in particular. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Boyd. Um, <coughs> one more item. Mr. Esco. Did we want to have a conversation about feasibility study now or at a future date? Uh, future date, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. We can add it to a future agenda item as well, just kind of talk about what we should do for process and community engagement and things of that nature too. Does that make sense? Is that, did we freeze again? Okay. Yeah. I think we have two things, a feasibility study and a visioning uh, you know, session, if you will. The feasibility study is really you know, putting a number on improvements that aren't necessary down the line, that are outside of the scope of the asbestos removal or encapsulation. Um, a vision for town hall would be you know, how can we best utilize that entire space uh, in the future? Um, you know, right now, obviously we're spreading out multiple offices and multiple sites. Uh, we're having meetings in the senior center, for example, for the select board. We really don't have adequate space to even have, um, you know, larger select board meetings. Uh, just as, as another example. Uh, so I just think they're two, maybe two separate things, but Authorizing a feasibility study, I think, should be a priority above all else. Yeah, yeah let's, put it, let's put it, let's put it on the future agenda. Yeah. Um, I would like to, on on the lack of um, meeting space, um, Mr. Hutchinson, I'd just like to suggest that maybe contact the CBRSD leadership and ask if their beautiful meeting rooms can be available to the towns that are part of CBRSD, if meeting space is needed for any any reason. We get more value out of that space as well. Uh, in, in the interim, then, until we figure out anything else, but that might be. Um, Did you go along with that, Joe? Yep. You had mentioned the, uh, our current Callahan room. Perhaps that could be converted into office space. And we could make this kind of a permanent thing, as many other boards already have, because of the space, the room, handicap accessibility. Absolutely agree. And uh, hey, maybe you make it into two offices. And, Put the town planner and health agent in right there. Yep. Great point, Mr. Yeah. We can do it. Yeah. 
Pass the expert. <laughs> no, I agree, Don. Yeah? I mean, you already have a list. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think there's, yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, number six, the town manager evaluation process. What I want to do is just talk to the board real quick about, um, I mentioned the 360 evaluation process, and what we're going to do, I'm going to send, uh, it's an online structure of questions. I'll send that to the board this week so you can see the questions, and also Mr. Hutchinson, so you can see those questions. And it's going to follow basically the town manager's job description as a structure. So there's a lot, lot, lot of parts of the job description I report to the board, uh, and those be very clear as far as you know preparation of our meetings, preparation of budget, um, and then there'll be questions to um, the um, as Mr. Hutchinson supervises department heads, and that really comes down to the guidance for those committees, the communication, the plan, and all those kind of things that come under supervision. Uh, kind of structure. Again, I'll share the questions in advance to the board and Mr. Hutchinson for feedback and if you can address any questions, happy to do so. And then the three six would be such that the board will receive basically all the questions and department heads will only receive questions specific to the section of the job description of the supervision and not the other questions that are relevant to the board. Um, but that would be kind of 360. And the intent of that is to just get that general feedback and also just, okay, understand that feedback and celebrate the successes, improve on any improvements that are communicated from anywhere, and continue to move forward and evaluate and, and step through that process. Um, I think a 360 is new for Dalton, but as we discussed at prior board meetings, that we all agree to the model. And myself, as a, as a leader in, health, in healthcare, I love the 360 because it gives me the staff feedback of how I need to improve my communication or maybe I'm doing great or whatever. I just have to say, I think you've been doing excellent. So. Uh, I don't think this is a uh, uh, any type of risk issue at all. Um, but if anybody has any feedback on those questions, just fire away. Okay. Okay. So I owe that to the board, and that will come out this week. Um, and with that, um, Ms. Sutchins, do you have any questions on that? I just want no. to know. Okay. Um, and then the town manager update. Uh, I have nothing for this meeting. Okay. I'll have it next week. Great. Thank you. Uh, future agenda items, we're going to uh, add the um, feasibility study question. And visioning. And the visioning. Anything else for future agenda? Yeah. <coughs> I wouldn't well, rush into that, Joe. I mean, no. Like that next week. Next week. Next we meeting. get what we agreed to focus on and put wheels on it and get it in motion and get it put down the road and other things. I think you're, you're, that's a great comment, Bull. Let's put in before that, making sure we have this whole architectural engineering plan represented to the board on what our next step of action is. I, mean, I just assume that will be a next, a future agenda item, but just to clarify, Mr. Board, that's a great point. Anything else with future agendas? Mr. Chairman. Yeah, yeah, uh, Mr. Esco. The uh, skateboard equipment that was donated by Mr. Lagerwald and placed at um, Amberlin Park has uh, deteriorated um, and it looks to me like some of it's probably not usable anymore. Maybe some could use a repair. Uh, we gotta just figure out what we're gonna do with it. That's a future agenda item, I would say. Okay. Uh, Mr. Boyle. Yeah, Nick, uh, our summer state, hey, yeah. ladies, folks about the BFW will handle that. An issue we wish we wish we could adjudicate as soon as possible. Yeah, I was actually oh, going to bring that up at number nine. I didn't oh. anticipate it, so we can talk about it tonight and get that on the calendar to help out the BFW. Yeah. Sure. We, we did have that on next week, but the yep. care of it now would be great. Uh, no, well, no, no, they got to advertise and they got to come in. Yeah, so we're going to give the BFW some. They just don't come in. They gotta, it, uh, it hasn't even been advertised yet, right, Alicia? No. We gotta have a date to put in the end. They have to have a date to put in the advertisement. So we can we got like right. yeah. July right. 18th. I right. mean that uh, July 11th. Yeah, yeah. Right. Is that a good date? Yeah. You want to be done? We usually only be once in July. You want that to be it? Um, we can just hold on that for number nine. We'll, we'll get right back. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Strzok, do you have a future agenda? Yeah. <clears throat> I had brought this up years ago about increasing the police detail fund. Uh, we had voted to approve it. Uh, I'm not sure if it was done, but they were reducing pressure off of Sandy and the officers. Also, I had quite a few questions or uh, inquiries about stump removal from the town. The town puts down a tree, or if um, 
We designed town property and a tree gets cut down. The stumps are, that are left there, and I have heard, and we have bothered John now, about the town used to give half of it, or half of it, or $100 or something like that to have a stump removed for, for a resident, something like that. But I had several several inquiries about that, so we can just talk about that in the future. Uh, okay, great, thank you, Mr. Bishop. Mr. Bishop, do you have anything? No. Okay. So I was not anticipated 48 hours before the meeting. So Mr. Bull had reached out to me about the DFW needing a uh, review of uh, their, their license for expansion of the. You go on and expand the premises. Expand the, the premises. premises meaning the area of the property that they are allowed to serve alcoholic beverages in. And Currently, I'll just. Take one second to expand that. Currently, they're only allowed, like most on premise or bars, and inside the building. They want to expand it out to their pavilion. That's the issue. You have to have a public hearing to talk about it. So, with that, we're looking at the uh, the summer schedule so we can give the FW advance notice of when we're meeting so then they can plan their next steps on the whole public notice, etc. Uh, any objections to uh, um, uh, July 11th because it would be a standard meeting. It is my anniversary, so I have to make sure I take my wife out over the weekend. <laughs> so that's okay. Um, but July 11th, proposed date for the July meeting? I'll be on vacation, but I can chime in if I have to. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. Mr. Esco, July 11th, okay with you? Yeah, I mean, it was already on the calendar as a regular meeting, right? Yep. yep. And then one in August, which is August 8th. August 8th. Yes, that was the second Monday in August. Is the 8th? Yeah. Okay. Fine with me. Okay. All right, so 7 11 8. Perfect. Okay. You've got to get back to the EFW page tomorrow, so plot there. Legal um, with that, any remarks from the select board? Good luck, good luck to Wakona and the cross tomorrow as they go to the yeah. state finals. Yeah. Good luck. I, I have to uh, declare a conflict of interest. My hometown is sandwich. <laughs> They're playing <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, too bad. <laughs> yeah. One set of evaluation. Uh, exactly. Mm -hmm. no, don't worry. We'll get uh, we'll get some Wakona blue shirts for yeah. uh, um, let's see what, okay, so the announcements, um, the tax collector assessors, health aid, tax collector assessors, the health agent and building inspector have moved from town hall across the street to the old Berkshire Bank building at 48 Main Street. We encourage you to use the drop box to locate outside of the town hall for any payments, or you still can drop, or you could, or you still can stop over to the, to the new location. New car permits and bag stickers are available at the transfer station. Residents will still be able to use up their old bags and will be able to buy car permits and bag stickers both by check at the transfer station and on the town's website. And with that, um, can I go back to future agendas? Maybe we could just have an update on that program. So the transfer station. Um, the following committees have vacancies and are looking for volunteers. ADA Committee, Beautification Commission, Conservation Commission, Dalton Cable Advisory Committee, Dalton Green Committee, Dalton Redevelopment Authority, Finance Committee, Stormwater Management Commission, Waste Management and Recycling Committee. If interested, please reach out to the town's manager's office by calling 413-684-6111, extension 202. I do have one other announcement before I get to announce the next meeting. I forgot to make this announcement, but um, um, uh, Richard, oh my God, what's his last name? I just blanked. Green Committee. Richard, oh, Richard, Hall. Hall. Richard Hall, thank you. I don't know why I blanked on this committee. Uh, he has stepped down from the Green Committee after five years of service, um, so I just want to publicly thank him for his, his, uh, his dedication and his, not, his, his significant knowledge in that space. And I uh, wish him best of luck as he opens up um, a new business for himself. So uh, he's very focused on that, so I just want to publicly thank Richard for his, his time and expertise. Um, Next meeting is scheduled to take place on Monday, June 27, 2022 at 6 p.m. at Wakona Regional High School prior to the special town meeting with an option for Zoom participation. Uh, and with that, I just want to thank the, uh, the select board, Ms. Archinson, Mr. Pettit, um, Brittany, and Melissa keeping us in control, and Dalton Community TV, and certainly our finance committee folks, and uh, for joining tonight's special session to talk about this very important issue of town hall renovation. 
And with that, I a motion to adjourn. So moved. So second. Roll call vote. Yes. Joe Yes. Robert Bishop. Yes. Mike Scott. Yes. John Bell. Yes. Yes. Great. We're adjourned. Thank you, Dalton. Good night.